And we're live, mate. Cole, welcome on, sir. Thank you very much. Guys, so Cole is an incredible client. I'm working with Cole personally. Cole's also working with one of uh, one of our coaches, Christian. And, and the reason why I got Cole on is because he's a business owner. He has an awesome, awesome business in, in, in travel trucks, which I'll let Cole tell you a little bit more about. He's a dad, he's a husband, and he's an all-around really, really awesome guy. Um, and so, Cole, I just want to say thanks for coming on. Mate, when you first found me swanning around on social media doing my thing like what what was yeah. life like for you uh it was all sped up i was just out of control of my own head i couldn't focus my family life was up to shit to be honest um my 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 work had consumed me to the point it was my identity um i didn't know how to have fun anymore i'd lost my passion for any hobbies um me and my wife were we were very, very close to divorce a few times. I'd lost connection with my children. Um, I felt that I wasn't a man any longer. I just lost the will. Um, yeah, it was a bit of a sad old time. Turned to alcohol, drugs, you name it, I was doing it. Um, yeah, no, just very, very unhappy as a human being at the end of the day. How'd you get there? Because it's not like one day you wake up and you're like, oh, fuck, like, you know, how this happened yesterday, everything was perfect. Like, what was the, what was it like getting into that position? Um, so I've been self-employed oh, 25 years. Um, I'd let the business consume me and I lost my identity. That's what I recognise now. And um, I put the priority to get to the, uh, was, I made the business a priority. I didn't make my life the priority. And unfortunately, my, my family suffered for that. Um, and then, you know, and it's just a snowball effect after that. Too many work hours, too many lunches. You know, you just turn to shit after that. So in what way, like when you say turn to shit, are you talking about turn to shit as a, as a dad, as a husband, health-wise? Like in what ways we turn to shit? Um, yeah, more my mental health. Um, and then and then it gets on top of you around about my my actual physical health has always been quite good. I've been very blessed about having a good, healthy body, and I've, I've given it a test too, I can tell you. So, um, but yeah, just my mindset on who I was, you know, I, I've lost who I was, who my family was. Uh, when my children are young, I was just that guy that turned up and had dinner and went back to work. Um, so then as the Why years went on, like that? Um, I think it's generational. My father was a workaholic. He was, he was one of that generation that, um, he didn't have time for you, but he loved you. So, you know, he would just, he knew no different. And that's what I got from him. Mm. Uh, and there was a pertinent day when I was standing there and it was, oh, many years ago, and it was the change of my life was I was standing up in my shed working and I'm looking down, here's my family having dinner and I couldn't bring myself to go down there and I actually felt like a, a, a stranger within my own home. In and what way were you a stranger? I didn't know how to fit in. I didn't know how to function within the group. I was doing a lot of overseas travelling then, all over Australia, so I was just a guy on the end of the phone. And so as soon as you walked into the household, like it had its own dynamics going on, but I wasn't part of that. Mm. So I used to upset the whole apple cart most of the time and then I'd just pull myself out of there because I knew it wasn't healthy for the, for the family group. I've got three boys and a, and a girl. Um, next, in June, married for 30 years. And to be honest with you, I don't know how I held it together. <laughs> um, and that's where... Yeah, and then you actually have the whole inner battle with yourself about self-doubt, who you are, what you could have done better. But I didn't know what to do with it. Um, didn't talk to people about it. Just get up, go to work, groundhog day. Yeah, gotcha. Mm. And so what was the moment where you decided, you know, I've actually got to do something about this? About seven years ago, I was 106 kilos. Now, I'm only five foot nine. I was a fat fucker, really sick in the head. Couldn't even get out of bed properly, didn't know what to do next. I got to the point where I really had thoughts in my head or is this worth continuing and all these sort of things. So I, 
I reached out for some medical help. Just on that, just to clarify, when you say, is this worth continuing? Like, what were you referring to there? Uh, I didn't have suicidal thoughts, but I definitely had thoughts of just hiding. Just go, just head off, head overseas, become somebody else. Mm. Um, run away, basically. And, um, yeah, I got into... Uh, I thought I'd go running because I'd played football my whole life. And then I thought, oh, well, I'll just start running again and start training but i had no I had no direction around that either so injuries came and when you're 106 kilos and you're trying to run distance it's not fun <laughs> it's not easy on your knees is it no. mate i'm down so, from i was 105 and i'm down to 82 now and oh my god like i wasn't even fat i was just big and it was like yeah. it's so much easier being a healthy weight isn't it mate i'm 85 kilos all day long now and um, I bounce out of bed. I, you know, I'm still physical in the workshop. So every time I get up off the workshop floor, I actually use it as exercise now. And uh, yeah, I might do a couple of sit ups while I'm there. And <laughs> just yeah, but, yeah, yeah, that bloke is doing push ups on the floor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, you're the boss. You can do these things, right? Yeah. I've got, got a few young pups in the workshop, so I still like to show them that the old dog can still do it. You know. <laughs> Hundred percent. And so, so going back. Sorry, I interrupted. So you 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 were one hundred and six kilos. You were getting injured doing all that sort of stuff. And then, and then, what did you start doing next when you realised that wasn't working for you? Um, I just realised in my life that I was better than I than I was showing. And looked in the mirror. I did a hard look in the mirror one day. Took some photos of myself just standing there, me jocks, and and I didn't like what I saw. Um, I'm not sure what pushed me to that point, but it was just something that within me that made me do that. Um, oh, I've been uh, proud of my appearance and all those sort of things, but I thought I'd let it slip a lot. Well, I had because I was—I used that photo today. It's in my little private thing, and when, when I get down and out, I think, oh, shit, you know, I'm not doing too well. I pull up that photo and go, well, that's not the guy I am anymore. Hmm. And um, my wife, I thought, well, you know, what's she dealing with? So I had a lot of inner stuff going on at that point, and I thought the best thing I can do is get off the piss, get off the drugs. Um, I was pretty fortunate that the GFC came along, and it actually um, it was a life-changing experience in that time where I could have just gone, well, was me, my business is shot to shit because I was in the mining industry at that point. And, you know, you could have just imploded and just turned to shit with it, but... I decided that the positive out of that is that now I'm, it's stopped. That whole culture has stopped. And what am I going to do next? And that's what got me in. I started trail running and um, really enjoy the nature, which I always had. I'm a camper and fisherman and all those things. And I just, I just lost all that. Um, so, yeah, it was a really cool feeling. And anyway, the first time I went out, I, met, I went to a lady's. Uh, trail running group, right? Because there was no macho bullshit there and they didn't care. Did they and beat you? Like, Big pardon? Did they beat you? I was about two kilometres behind them. <laughs> I was going to say, it's a risky risky move going to an all, all women's trail running club because you know they're going to smoke you and it's not good for the ego. They burnt me, mate. They put me right where I needed to be. Yeah, I got up the next morning and I went, you know what? I actually really enjoyed that. And um, I've, I've been doing it ever since. Yeah, uh, right. Even to the point now, uh, I've done eight 100-kilometer events now. Um, I do multiples of 50s. Just went to New Zealand and did 107K there. I'm signed up to go and do Alice Springs, doing a 135K event there. Um and what I found was um, I found an inner peace with it. You know, some people think I'm crazy, which is okay, but, you know, you've got to find your own crazy at the end of the day to to work out who you are and what you are and what your abilities are. And it was way out of my comfort zone. I never thought I'd be a distance runner. So but why it's all do you go and push yourself as opposed to just sitting back in your comfort and not taking a risk? Um, well, there's no growth there. I've always known that I need to get out of my comfort zone to grow. If you just sit there, you know, you just ride away. Um, yeah. You know, but I didn't start off doing 100 k's. I did. A, I did park runs. Like I did 50 park runs, and yeah. the 
it was funny because there was a 70 year old guy and a three-legged dog right anyway my whole goal was to beat the three-legged dog and the 70 year old right <laughs> i never beat the three-legged dog and i think the 70 year old passed away unfortunately <laughs> before you could beat him yeah <laughs> there's more than one way to win a race yeah. <laughs> but uh, i used to talk to that guy and i say to him i've got you today i've got you today and i'd take off and he would just stay consistent and move along and he'd come running past me again and say not today <laughs> But what it taught me there is, you know, you just need consistency about anything you do. It doesn't matter if you're running, it doesn't matter if it's business, it doesn't matter if it's life, wife, children, consistency. Just and then so it goes, you got that lesson out of it. Where did that then take your, your self-development journey? Um, well, I got to the running thing. Business wasn't going really great because I had to basically restart the whole business. I didn't go back into the mining industry. I'm an auto electrician by trade, so I've got a good background in manufacturing and building stuff. So then I decided to start travel trucks, which was building motorhomes. Um, now, not just ordinary motorhomes. These are go-anywhere, big four-wheel drive motorhomes. Mm. And, um, yeah, I just started slowly. And I had no coaching at that point. I just did it all myself. Um and hindsight now, I probably should have reached out a little earlier, but there wasn't a lot of things around at that time either. Yeah, I think um, a lot of industry was still working out what the aftermath of the GF GFC actually what it was. You know, especially guys like me, I'd been in the mining industry nearly twenty years, and then to have nothing, it was uh, quite. It was a big slap in the face, but um, something within me like. And I think we all have it within us to actually just go, well, yeah, you have your woe is me moment, but fuck it. Like, this is not what I want. This is not what I want to be. Just, you got to pull that from somewhere. Um, and, that's, you know, that's what I did. Gotcha. And then so what made you decide to want to reach out and have a chin wag with us? Okay. So I did another program before I come on to use guys, which was more business orientated. Mm -hmm. which was great and it worked really well and it fixed a few things around business and it gave me my identity back. But then I needed to, I knew that I needed within myself to work out um, who I was, what my purpose was. Um, similar sort of training to the business, but personal. Yeah. Anyway, you came along the bloody um, <laughs> Facebook thing and I'm thinking, oh, who's this young pup? You know, he's, he's full of life and, yeah, he's got some charisma and he's a good-looking rooster and, you know, he's looks like you got it all made, you know? My mum tells me I'm good-looking. Not my wife, though. <laughs> um, anyway, I listened to you for quite a while. Some of the stuff I didn't agree with, some of the stuff I did. And I was sitting there one day and I went, what have I got to lose? Like, you know, it's just make a phone call and have a chat. And then, uh, yeah, it just went from there and went from strength to strength. Hmm. Gotcha. And so, you know, at that moment where you're going through and you're looking to join some coaching thing, there's always that voice, not always, but a lot of the time there's that voice that says, oh, don't do it. You don't need this. You can get it. You can do it yourself. Like, you know, your life's not really that bad. Do you really need to do this? Did you have any of those thoughts? Oh, a hundred percent, mate. Like um, the world we live in now, we market to so heavily, you don't know what to trust. And like I market my business and it, you know, and I understand how it all works. So um, <laughs> maybe I think too much about it now when I'm trying to find something because I'm I'm looking layers in behind to go where where are they going to get me? Where are they going to snag me? You know. <laughs> well, so why do you why you move ahead with that? Because that's pretty logical, right? I do the same thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think every business owner does because we get it. Real business owners, we know how marketing and sales and all that sort of stuff works. Yeah. So why what was different? about what we do and why did you choose to go ahead with that as opposed to just saying, oh, no, that looks a bit dodgy? It was more because it was more predominantly focused on men. Um, you know, my other program was men and women only because it was just business, whereas this was more pertinent to finding my identity as a man again. Um, now, I didn't look around. I didn't research or anything. I'm usually pretty quick at deciding pretty well Within 24 hours, I normally make a decision if I'm in or I'm out. 
but I don't go in and just dip my toe. I go right in. Mm. Because at any time I could have run you up and said, hey, listen, it's not for me, man, and I know it's all cool. You have to move on. Life goes another direction. So making a choice, moving ahead, don't second guess it and into it. How has that sort of mentality served you throughout the years? Uh, I've learned some lessons. <laughs> have, you, have you had any big regrets, though, with that, with going all in and just saying, fuck it, I'll take the risk? No, I don't, I don't believe in regrets myself. Um, I think there's lessons uh, and then there's wins. Um, gut feel is a big one for me, just trusting your instincts. Oh, I've made mistakes that have cost me twenty, thirty thousand dollars, but they're not life-changing mistakes. I think when you know when you look at um, things that could change your whole life, I have a different process around it. I really, I actually reach out to other people, get opinions from trusted advisors and bits and pieces. Yeah, if it's if it's big, um, but the small things like you know. Not that it's small to invest with JCF, but at the end of the day, I, I looked at it and I went, okay, well, at that point, it was a six-month program. Um, I could see the value in what I was paying for. Um, and as long as I put in... Now, one thing I learned from the program before was I underutilised the resources. And I've probably done the same thing with um, uh, your app side of things. Mm. And I keep myself for that every time. And I'm trying to change that habit to go, come on, just watch a couple of those videos. Yeah, you might be sick of James' voice, but at the end of the day, it's the information I'm looking for. <laughs> not, not the face you have to look at. And I do apologise about that. I can't change it. Blame my mum, blame my dad. Um, but so, so with that, where do you think you'd be right now if you didn't take a risk, you didn't have a punt? Um, I know personally I'd be in a holding pattern. I got to a point where the business was going okay. Um, I had this fallacy that if I got the business right, I'd be right. Mm. But it wasn't going to happen. You know, it's chalk and cheese in the last, I think I've been with you now, 12 months. Um, my thought patterns are different. My The way I speak, the way I interact with people, the way I view things, um, I've just got a lot more clarity around those. And even now, my gut feeling, I don't have to use it so much. Mm. Or a little bit more informed. Um, I'm not a structured person. I'm a very ad lib person. Uh, that's probably the creative side of my nature. Yeah. Um, so for me to sit down and go put a spreadsheet together, it just doesn't happen. So what I've done is hired people that are good at that. And or leaned on people who are good at that because that's not my strength. If you bring me a box of trucks, a box of bits and truck, I can just stand there and go, yeah, this is how it goes together. <laughs> yeah. Um, but for personal-wise, I would just be in a holding pattern. My relationship with my wife wouldn't be, you know, we're talking so much more than we ever have. We've actually set some goals to move forward in life to where we're going, like to give any uh, – where we are in life is – my children, uh, my youngest is 17, my oldest is 25. I've only got two still at home. And they're just about to move off. So me and Joe are in a uh, change of life, you know, early 50s. Um, we sit there sometimes and go, hmm, so who are these two people? <laughs> Hi, my name's Cole. Um, yeah. So it, it's reinvigorating that communication with your loved one. Like, you know, you you go through life and the trap that we fell for is we, we work so hard on bringing up four children, we forgot to look after ourselves. Super common, man. We see that all the time. That's probably one of the biggest things we see with guys in between that 45 to 55 year range is that like you've put everything into everyone else, particularly with men. Like we put everything into the business, everything into like serving and providing for everyone that we forget who we actually are and what our relationship actually is. And so, okay, so I'm going to ask, what was it like through the program? So you, you've done a massive shift, right, to a point where you're connecting with your wife. You're actually present. Your life's not absorbed by work anymore. You're actually calm. Um, what were the things that allowed you to do this? What, what, what were the actions that you took? Uh, within the program, you mean? Or just yeah, within the, the program. Um, okay, so I think it's, uh, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but cortisol levels were quite high. 
So yeah. just getting on the right supplements, getting my food, um, what I'm eating and how I'm eating was a big one for me because same thing, a lot of business owners do the same thing. It'd be two o'clock, you haven't had lunch, you haven't had something to eat for the morning, you know, you're running yourself ragged. Oh, bugger it, I'll smash a pie or I'll smash a hamburger or I'll have a can of Coke or I'll, oh, I need a cup of coffee or I, you know. <laughs> And now that I've got to this point, I look at that and go, how couldn't you see that that was wrong, <laughs> you know? <laughs> but at the moment, you don't think of it, right? Because it's just uh, like, oh, I just need to get something in and so you choose anything that's convenient. Yeah. Getting ready for a meeting, you know, I'd use soft drink um, or a coffee. Um, a bit more mindful around coffee with my running because I, I, I am structured that way. But um, definitely using uh, chocolate, um, any of those stimulants to get you up and going. And mm. I'm, I'm a naturally vibrant person, but I was finding I was getting these massive spikes and massive lows and, Oh, it's just all over the place. But sometimes I just lay down in the office because I was just a wreck. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so the um, got me onto the right supplements, um, which work really, really well. It took obviously it takes a while with supplements to get that happening. Um, my routine with my breakfast, um, just the and just when I eat, um, my alcohol, you know. I still have a beer and, you know, I don't have to really give it up. It's not a problem. But it was just more looking at a little bit more and actually taking note when I did eat or decide that, okay, this weekend I'm having a couple of beers or we're going out for dinner and I'm just going to relax a little bit. And then just knowing back on Monday, I'm back on the path, you know, a little bit of a, let's say, falling off the wagon. Monday morning, I'm back on. I'm just back on to what I'm doing. And just keeping it simple. Mm, mm. And you mentioned as well that you're more clear in your direction now. Um, mm. That that's a big one. Actually, I've had a number of dudes recently talking to me about it. That they get you get to a stage where your business is good, everything's just good, but you don't know what the next thing is. What what did you find most helpful for getting clear on where you're going and what you want? Personally, for me, it was working on my spirituality. I actually didn't know what it was. Now, in my head, it was a bit woo-woo or, you know, you had to go and sit in a hill and hum for a while or whatever. Um, you can't do that. Of course you can. Yeah, yeah. Oh, look, it's whatever it means to you in that regard. Yeah. Um, hats off to those people that sit up the mountains and do that. It's not where I'll be. Yeah, but, same. I'm with you there, mate. Yeah. So if I turn up orange and bald, you know I've been. Um, <laughs> No, it's, um, it was just connecting back with um, your environment, you know, working out where you fit into the, the big picture stuff. Um, meditating is something that I did naturally. I didn't realise it. Um, you know, what you've got me doing now with the, um, I can't think of the name of it right now, but um, just taking in the environment, taking the moment, slowing down, appreciating what you're doing, where you are, the people you interact with. You know, if you don't want to interact with somebody, don't. You know, you don't have to be forced to in anything and just start looking at things a little differently from that regard. Whereas before, as a business owner, like anybody can walk in your door and destroy your day. But now, I don't. I don't let them do that. I don't let them in. Mm -hmm. It's like, no, you're, you're not... A, fit for me you're not a fit for the business and sometimes that can be quite a, a hard conversation whereas before i just let them run straight out of the top of me. yeah and then then we'd be doing work for nothing um so having to find out what my uh values were was a big thing as well and who it was mm. and what impact did having your values have on you my values haven't changed but what they have done is I've got more meaning in my values. I've always had the word and then a little bit of a uh, bit of what it means for me in behind it. And now it's like a paragraph of how, and I've just gone a little deeper with my values. So my business values and my personal values are a little bit different, mm -hmm. um, but my core personal values have always been the same. 
I've probably got a few more now, and I've sort of just played with them a little bit. Hmm. So, okay. So if you've got someone, if someone's listening to this and they're where you were, you know, a year ago, seven years ago, even where what? you're not in shape, you're not feeling good. You're not energetic. You, you, you know, not as close with your partner and you're, you know, you, as you said, you're a stranger in your own home. Business is good. Like you're doing well there, but everything else kind of falling to the wayside. What yeah. would you tell them to do? Just have a good look at yourself. Um, try and rise above you as a person. Uh, I call it hovering or helicoptering or just, just try and pull yourself out. Get in an elevator and look down uh, and just look at it and be honest with yourself. Like you, you can't bullshit yourself because it's, it'll just sit with you and it just is an ugly feeling. Um, write it down. Scribble things down. Brain dump. You know, I'm, I'm not a great writer. I'm not great anything as in when it comes to literary stuff, but... What I do is I use a whiteboard because it's a caveman thing and I really resonate being a caveman. So I go up there and I've got all my different colours and colours mean a lot to me and I scribble up things and I can rub it off and I can rewrite it, you know, and, it, and it's just a... I find it a very freeing experience to be able to express your mind and brain dump and just get that out of your head because we're... At that point, I reckon I had... I couldn't even take in a conversation. I was that full. Yeah, right. I couldn't. Yeah, it was. And when I got tutored with brain dumping, um, just letting it out, let it come out, write it down, whatever. Man, it was like, oh, just like an empty attic. Mm. You could just take so much in me. But my advice is, you know, I did the look in the mirror thing. Um, I do constantly look in the mirror now and have a bit of a chat to myself. I don't know if that's crazy or weird or whatever, but. We already know you're great, though. That's the least <laughs> crazy thing you do. <laughs> I find it liberating because th it's just you. <laughs> yeah. Um, apart from that is actually reach out. Like it, it could be a men's group. It could be a social group. It could be a football group. It could be anything, but it's a social interaction because I held myself away from you know, years and years of playing football and being in team sports and all that and then I went into this business and then I got so isolated because I was the boss I was the owner I was the drive staff didn't care about me and then I isolated myself and that was on me I isolated myself from my family I was I was just on my own mm. and I, I didn't realize that at the time but I do now and that's probably why I went to a, a running group you know, and, and surround himself with people. Now, I was really, really nervous when I pulled up there, especially a women's running group. Like, yeah, <laughs> going to get your ass handed to you. <laughs> but I pushed through it. Like, I, my biggest advice is you're not, nobody's going to hurt you. Nobody's going to judge you. You're only going to judge yourself. You, you need to be loved. Mm. That's really cool, man. I appreciate it. Dude, Cole, thank you so much for coming on. No worries. It's been good. This has helped me as well because I think um, to actually just speak your mind and tell a story is just so empowering. Well, dude, so I think the, other thing is the fact that you can, you get, you're actually at a point where you can share and you can help someone else. I mean, as men, all we want to do is give, right? Like that's the ultimate masculine is giving, giving, giving. And we were talking about before we jumped on here, how, you know, we, I interviewed Pat a couple of weeks ago and Pat, you know, quit, quit drinking, went from 80 beers to a week to eight. And there's a bunch of people now who've just quit drinking because they watch Pat's, Pat's podcast. I think there's something incredible about that. Yeah. Um, that someone you can, you can sit in this position where you were in a shit spot. You've gone through all the trials and tribulations. You've come out the other end where you're crushing it in all areas of life. And the fact that you can actually give something to someone who was where you were, one year ago to seven years ago. I think there's something really powerful about that. It is amazing. It is, I'm not a coach, but um, it is an amazing feeling to actually pick somebody up and just give them a little bit of encouragement. And you think you may have just saved their day. I think this interview probably will, man. So thank you for sharing. Cool. No worries. Thank you very much. Appreciate it, mate. Love your work. Yeah, mate. Bye. Cheers, guys.